Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Blender. And this is part six of a multi-part tutorial in which we take a look at how I went about creating this steampunk fish scene. So let's get into it. So this is where we left it last time. We'd built pretty much everything. Let's just turn back on the reference image and see what's still left to do. Maybe to try these little pipes at the top here. I'm just gonna whiz through this and not explain it in too much detail because it's pretty obvious how to do it. So adding a cylinder, scaling it, positioning it, adding this little bit of a hip with some loop cuts, then deleting the top face there and adding a solidify. So that one's pretty easy. Now this one here, this bent pipe, rather than trying to make our own bent pipe, because we've enabled the add-on, we can come to add mesh and pipe joints, and we can use pipe elbow. Again, it's just a question of scaling that down, move it into position and scale it a little bit more. So that's a very easy little fix for that. We can add a solidify to that as well. So then we need to add the sort of inner workings of the fish. And we can do that with another cylinder. So mesh cylinder to so rotate it through 90 degrees on X, scale it up till it's more or less filling that hole there. Probably a radius of one is actually what we need there, I think. So with the fish body selected, make sure we're in X-ray mode. Let's turn off the reference image. Let's come to edit mode and vertices and we just need to move these vertices until they're just slightly touching the, the the new cylinder that we've made like this. Let's come out of edit mode and let's reselect our cylinder. So let's come into edit mode, uh, still in x-ray mode, still in vertices mode. Let's come to the side view here. Let's select this back row of vertices and in the side view here, Let's set the Z position to zero. Select this front row and let's just move it out till it's sitting in front of the rest of the fish like so. And let's turn off X-ray mode to check what we've done. And that is looking fairly good, I think. So then we can come to faces mode and delete this front face. And then we want to come into object mode and we want to solidify this so add modifier, solidify, and we want to crank it up quite a bit so we hide any of those edges there. So let's go for 0.075, I think it's probably going to be quite good. So one little thing to be aware of is that the back face of this cylinder has got its normal pointing the wrong way. I'm just going to turn off the visibility of the solidify and I'm going to come over here and turn on face orientation and that tells us which direction the faces are pointing and this back face here needs to be pointing the other way so come into edit mode and faces select that back face and then we can come to mesh and normals and flip and you can see that it turns blue and then turn back on solidify and that will allow us to edit this the way that we want because that face is actually pointing forwards now rather than backwards so actually now let's add a subdivision surface up the number of viewport levels up to two and we don't need to see that face orientation anymore and loop cut and let's just throw in a loop cut there at the front another one at the back maybe so i think we can we can probably leave it at that. So that's our core done. And I think at this point, we want to look at the much more difficult question of how we mirror all of these various elements. So let me show you why this is a little bit tricky and what we need to do to get around it. Let's first of all, start with the body. And let's add a modifier mirror. And we don't want X, we want Y. And so now we get the body mirrored. But the problem is we've got this very, very sharp edge here, which just looks terrible. So we can't live with that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move the body slightly forward on Y, and then that'll give us a little bit of, of leeway to play with here. So let's come over here and on Y, let's move the body over by 0 0.05 like that. And then in the viewport, we need to do control A and apply all transforms. And you can see what that's done 
is it's opened up a gap between the two. And we can actually now use that gap to our advantage. So we're going to come into edit mode and edges. And what we need to do is we need to be able to select the edge that runs all the way around here. So I'm going to try and select that using alt click. And we just need to check that it has actually tidily selected everything. And I think that is looking actually quite good. So then what we can do is we can extrude it back to close the gap. So E and Y and 0 0.05. And now that's closed that gap back up again. So those edges are now meeting the other ones. And actually overall, that looks pretty nice. If we look all around, it's fairly smooth. And I think we can we can certainly live with that. So we need to do the same thing with everything else. So let's let's try it. It's a little bit harder. Uh, let's try, for example, this back fin here. Let's first of all mirror it. So add modifier mirror. And again, we want Y and not X. And you can see again the problem that we have. It's just a little bit too sharp. It just looks silly where the, the these edges meet. So we'll need to select it and move it forward again on Y. So probably not as far this time. Maybe go for negative 0 0.025 and then Control A over the viewport and apply all transforms. And I think that's a better gap in this instance. But first of all, I need to make a slight refinement to the mesh. Let's just temporarily disable the mirror. And I want to select this face and this face, this face and this face, X to delete. And that's going to allow us to make a nice smooth um, edge selection. So let's try doing that now. Let's try alt clicking that edge. And that actually makes a pretty good loop for us there. Let's turn back on mirror and we can try to extrude that now. So if we do E and Y and 0 0.025, it's fairly good, but it hasn't quite joined up those back edges there. We might just need to adjust those points until they're actually at zero. So, so there you go, that's tidied that up and probably need to do the same thing underneath as well. So that's worked quite well for the, that fin there. So let's now take a look at this bottom one here. Let's first of all apply the mirror modifier and select Y. And I've deliberately allowed this to go wrong so you can see the problem you want to avoid. So we've got an X and Z location that haven't been applied and an X rotation that hasn't been applied. So we can fix that by coming into the viewport, Control A, all transforms, and now that mirroring has taken place correctly. So as before, we want to actually move this out a little bit on Y. So again, let's go for negative 0 0.025 like that. And again, over the viewport, control A, location. And that's opened up the gap that we need. This is one more thing I want to do before we uh, finesse this, and that's to delete these four faces from the top there. So delete those faces. And then we can think about what we're going to do with our extrusion. So an alt click is not going to give us the edge that we need this time. If you notice it just picking up that. So I need to actually go around with the control key and pick up all the remaining edges that I need to affect. And I think those are going to be good. Actually, let's grab that one as well, I think. So everything from here to here. And let's now do our extrusion. So E and Y and point 0.025. And that's closed them up quite nicely. So then I'm going to use my good old friend Snap. So let's come into Snap, make sure we've got face nearest, and let's enable the Snap tool. And let's select the Move tool. Now I'm just going to do this a couple of edges at a time. Select these two, drag them up, and as you see that really nicely, glues it to the, uh, the body. I don't want that effect there. I want that, so don't go too high on those. Let's grab these two here and drag them up until that snaps against the body like that. That's looking good. And let's select the back here, this and this, drag them up until they glue themselves to the body. So we've got this problem of this opening here on the front and also on the back. 
And I think there's quite a simple fix for that. So let's come in and turn off the body just so we can see what we're doing. Let's turn off subdivision. And what we actually want to do is to move this vertex here to zero on Y. So let's do that, move that to zero, turn back on subdivision, turn back on the body. And now that's sunk into the body and that's gonna be good. So let's just do the same thing with the back. And in this case, it's this vertex here, set that to zero turn back on subdivision, turn back on the body, but not quite there. This one probably needs to come up as well. So just do that. There you go. That's sorted that problem out. And that's a pretty neat result. So that wasn't too hard, that one. Let's have a look at the top, which I think is going to be more of a challenge. Let's select this. Again, you'll notice that we've got unapplied rotations and locations there. So over the viewport, control A, apply all transforms. We know what we need to do in advance here, which is to move it on Y. So let us just do that straight away. For the Y position, let's go for negative 0.025 there. And again, we'll apply the location, control A in the viewport. And then we can come to add modifier mirror, select Y instead of X. So you might get luckier and find that you can still use the extrude option at this point. I'm finding it a little bit problematic. So I'm going to go about it a different way and it's worth knowing about this anyway. I'm just going to hide these spheres which are getting in the way a little bit. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to apply this mirror modifier. So select it and control A and that's applied it. And what I can then do is come into edit mode and edges and I can simply bridge the edge loops. So I'm going to select those two, for example, control E for the menu and select bridge edge loops. And you can see that's kind of bridged those pretty well. And we just need to go through and select the opposite set of edge loops. Just do this a little bit at a time. That set of edge loops there, control E bridge edge loops. And this is a pretty sort of safe way of doing it. So these here are going to bridge pretty well, control E, bridge edge loops, and so on round. And I'll come back when I've done that. So I've done that and it's all fairly neat now. Uh, there were some strange sort of crossings over that were happening and I don't know why. Probably I've done something accidental while I was recording this. Anyway, just go very slowly if you're, you're facing that problem and make sure that each edge loop is nice and tidy rather than trying to do a huge chunk at a time. OK, so uh, let's just switch up back on our spheres and you'll probably notice that they're not in the center. Uh, that's because I parented them to the dorsal fin. So let's just select them all like that. Come into object mode, look at the top view and just move them over till they're sort of centered up like that. There we go. So I think that's probably enough for this time around. So that whole mirroring process was quite a challenging undertaking. And I think you need to sort of take it slowly just to get the best results. So I hope that's been useful. I think I probably need to come back for another tutorial at some point. So thanks very much for watching. See you again soon.